What's happening guys? It's Shane here. So I posted the video the other day on how you can choose the best college degree for you and a few things came to my attention. One, people tend to get extremely triggered when you tell them they're getting a useless degree. And two, you guys want to see a video on what the most useless degrees are. And I want to be one of the few creators out there that actually cares and listens to what their subscribers want. And so here we go. OP is going to deliver. And all I ask in return is that you very gently tap that like button. I've been seeing this very disturbing trend lately where people are smashing the like button. and I just don't condone that sort of violence. Anyways, all joking aside, in this video, I'm gonna go over what degrees you should absolutely avoid at all costs. But before I trigger a few more people, I just wanna put a very, very quick disclaimer out there. But Shane, you should always follow your passion. Listen, if your passion in life happens to be one of the degrees that I mentioned in this video, that's totally fine. You should still follow your passion. All I'm saying is you should not go $50,000 in debt for a piece of paper that's not gonna benefit you at all and you will likely end up serving coffee to people and misspelling people's names. And you can still study the subjects you're passionate about. I mean, top universities in the world offer all of these classes for absolutely free. You just don't get a degree from them. And you can learn all you want about all these different subjects for free without spending any money going into debt. And if all of this information is free from the top universities in the world, then why would you ever spend money on it? Okay, so that was my disclaimer. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So number 10 on the list is gonna be psychology. And the reason that I decided to include this on the list, even though you can get a viable job, I mean, you can become a social worker or something like that. The reason I decided to include this one is because it is one of the top five most popular majors, even though it has really, really bad statistics and all of the important categories like job openings, job satisfaction, uh, future growth potential, all of these things that are very, very important. And I find psychology to be extremely interesting. I mean, I took extra classes on it and undergrad. I spent that extra money. It's very, very interesting and I can see why so many people like it, but I don't recommend actually majoring in it. And I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this one because it is useful. I mean, you can definitely argue on this, but the reason I decided to put it in is because it's so popular and I just think it's one where a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking that they can make money after graduating with this degree. And then they end up five, to maybe even six figures in debt and they can't get a job. So number nine on the list is going to be drama and theater arts. And you might be surprised that this one isn't further down on the list because it does get made fun of a lot. But the reason I put this one further up is because it is actually kind of difficult to teach somebody how to act and all that sort of thing from a book. So this is one that would be a little bit difficult for you to learn just from the free material that's online. You'd have to at least, you know, get videos from professionals or something along those lines. Or maybe you might have to hire somebody who works at a local theater in order and take lessons from them so that they can teach you all the ropes and everything. And because it's so hard to teach someone this particular skill from a book or even videos, that's why I kept it towards the top of the list. But that doesn't change the fact that it's still a pretty worthless degree that you are going to have a hard time getting a job from. So number eight on the list is going to be language studies. And I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this one because there are some languages out there that, you know, if you learn and you get really good at, you can make a lot of money as a translator. But the reason I put this on the list is because you can easily learn a language by getting a video program or an audio program or actually moving to the country where this language is spoken. If you just spent those four years that you are studying the language and just moved to the country that speaks those languages in those four years, you would probably learn a lot more by doing that and you could get a job while you're there and make money. And this is the 21st century where you can go anywhere you want in the world and you don't need to go $50,000 in debt just to learn a language. Now, with that being said, the reason this one isn't further down on the list is because there are certain languages that are more difficult in terms of writing and speaking 
speaking than others. You know, an example of this would be Mandarin or Cantonese because that is a very useful language. It's uh, something that's going to be very useful to know in the next 50 years as business becomes more international. But at the same time, there are cheaper and probably better ways to learn the language than going to university and getting $50,000 in debt. So number seven on the list is going to be communications. And this one is actually kind of similar to psychology because it's an extremely popular major that people tend to choose. But don't get this too confused because this major is clearly even worse than psychology. And it's one of those majors that really makes you think like, what do you even do with this major? I mean, it's something that's so broad that it becomes kind of useless. Like they might as well come out with like a life degree or a breathing degree or a how to be a millennial degree or a how to smash that like button degree. Now, number six on the list is going to be photography. And this might be one of the most saturated fields on the entire list. We are witnessing a generation right now where basically everybody's a photographer and they all want to become Instagram famous so that they can get that sweet, sweet influencer money. Then when that doesn't work out, they decide to become an amateur photographer and you make the mistake of hiring them for your wedding and your pictures turn out like and the big point here is there's so many resources online like Peter McKinnon, for instance, on how to become a really good photographer. And a lot of them are free or very, very cheap and you can get high quality training. And this is one of those skills where you really just have to practice in order to get better. I mean, learning about it in a classroom isn't gonna help you out that much and getting a degree is not going to give you that much of an edge. You definitely do not need to spend five figures on this. And one of my best friends actually moved to the country barely knowing any English. He taught himself photography and he became one of the top wedding photographers in Las Vegas within just a few years. And he didn't have to go to university for this. He didn't have to buy some expensive course or go into debt for this. He basically learned it all from free resources or very, very cheap resources. And then he just practiced, practiced, practiced. And once you get really good at a skill like this, you know, it doesn't matter what credentials you have next to your name. What really matters is your portfolio because that will speak for itself. Okay, so these bottom five are getting really, really hard for me to pick because they're all so damn worthless. So number five on the list is going to be fine arts. And the reason this one is ranked even lower on the list than something like, you know, drama or theater is because at least in drama or theater, you know, you kind of do need to talk to a live person in order to learn it. But with fine arts, everything you need to know, you can absolutely learn just by reading books or watching videos or just hanging out and making friends with other people who are doing the same type of art as you. I mean, OK, I'm not even going to get into this one anymore. Um, I'm just going to move on. Number four on the list is gonna be anthropology slash archeology. span So when I was doing research on making this video, this one actually had the worst statistics out of every single one on the list in terms of, you know, actually getting a job, getting hired, you know, percentage of job growths and jobs are gonna open up in the next decade. I think this one was actually the number one worst on the list. And listen, with a job like archeologist, you're not going to get a job from getting a degree. If you want to break into this field, you're going to have to get creative about how you do it because there's simply just not that many job openings available. You got to get creative with this because there's just not that many job openings available. And the only thing you're going to end up rediscovering is your dignity when you have to pay all those student loans back. So number three on the list is going to be art history. And this one beats all of the other art degrees because it's not even art. It's the history of art. Like, you've got to be kidding me. You can so easily just go and buy a textbook. Like, you don't even have to watch videos on this. Just go buy some textbooks online. They're very, very cheap after a few years. <sighs> and then just go watch videos on YouTube about art history. It's just simply not a marketable skill. You should never spend that much money on something like that. I mean, this one is just, it, it's, it's painful to even think about or talk about. And, and each one of these, as I'm getting closer to number one on the list, are just getting more and more painful. Number two on the list is going to be religious studies. <sighs> 
Just go read a Bible or something. There's free ones in every cheap hotel across America. Like, how do you even expect to get a job or make money unless you're one of those television preachers or something? But you know what? It's, it's not just religious studies. It's basically anything that has the word studies after it. Yeah, this is just a general great rule to follow. Anything that has the word studies after it, don't pick that as your major. Sure, if you take one or two classes of something that has the word studies after it, that's totally fine. I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff out there, but for God's sakes, do not pick it as your major. If you're really passionate of something, just have an ounce of creativity and figure out how you can learn about it without spending $50,000 to get a piece of paper. Now, number one on the list might not surprise you. It is so ridiculed across the internet that it has practically gained meme status. And that is, of course, gender studies. And I don't think anything needs to be said here. I mean, you're completely wasting your money if you major in gender studies. I mean, just think about it. Where are the jobs? What kind of jobs? How can you contribute or give value to society by majoring in this? And you might be thinking, well, it's really important because politicians talk about it all the time. And that is a good point until you realize that none of those politicians actually have a degree in gender studies. And just look it up, like look up what degrees politicians have. And I can pretty much guarantee you that none of them are in gender studies. Okay, anyways, this video was pretty painful to make, but it was also a little bit fun to make at the same time. Um, go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the little notification bell, comment down below on what videos you'd like to see next, and I will be dropping a bunch of very, very awesome videos here in the new future, so stick around. Bye for now.